you welcome back what we're going to be looking at now is the fact that inflation rate has risen to 26.72 percent and food prices have also soared we are going to be talking uh, with Bolahon Olojede, a public policy analyst who will be talking to us from Lagos here. Good morning and welcome to the program, Bolahon. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Nice to be on the program. Yeah, it's always a pleasure having you join us. Okay, right now, 26.72% is scary. <laughs> let, me, let me get how you feel about that and what maybe you think led to this. Um, it's a very worrisome uh, situation, but it's also not unexpected. Um, the circumstances that led us to where we are right now have been brewing over the last few months. So we knew that we were going to get uh, something around this, this period uh, and that things were actually going to get worse uh, before they get better. Um, so that, that, it is what it is. That's, that's where we are right now. Uh, in fact, what some analysts might even said is that they were surprised that we have not gotten to this junction earlier. Uh, there were people who had thought that by now, uh, you know, even by last month we will have been here, and maybe by now we will be like 27% uh, uh, inflation rate because of the various issues uh, in the economy that are pushing up uh, those uh, price, general price uh, rates uh, within the system. Okay, am I supposed to be happy or even more scared by what you have said? <laughs> the intention is not to scare you. Um, it's to say that because it was predictable uh, that mm. we want to believe that the decision makers are watching that space and making efforts to see how this painful period will be as short as possible so that we can turn the table and begin to see the other side, uh, which is a gradual decrease in that uh, inflationary pressure we see. Uh, but for now, um, it is what it is. Uh, one of the things that we need to pay attention to, though, is the fact that the inflation, our uh, inflation, the composite inflation number, our headline inflation number, um, has given us, the analysis of that, the number, has told us exactly uh, where the problems are. And then we know which part of this problem we can begin to intervene in and uh, use that to moderate the inflationary spread. Uh, while we're talking of 27 uh, uh, you know, percent or so 26.72 percent. Food inflation is 30.64, 30. So that is one of the clear indicators, clear leading factors for what we have seen uh, as a composite number. So the the message for us is, if there is something we can do about food inflation, which is 30.64. If we do something about that, it will bring down the composite inflation figure that we see today. Okay, you said it will get worse before it gets better. Uh, you seem to be confident enough that there are things that were put in place that will make it get better after some time. Uh, some people are of the school of thought that the policies that were put in place will make it worse and get worse, not get better at all. Where do you stand? Uh, if you stand on the positive side that it will get better, what are these things that give you that confidence that it will get better? Okay. Um, like I said, we knew exactly how we got here. Uh, the energy cost was a critical factor. So um, full subsidy was removed and the energy costs went up dramatically uh, for everybody. The other part was the exchange rate. There was... What that did to us was to have increased um, the exchange rate of the Naira to major currencies across the world. So those were two factors, very major factors. 
So the question is, um, what can we do to moderate this problem? Uh, at number one, it is obvious, forget about what uh, official quarters are saying about um, the first subsidy not having been uh, intervened. I think there has been an intervention uh, in the first well, uh, subsidy issue because the cost of PMS has remained the same when Naira was uh, 700 and now that Naira is 1,000. So in the real sense, there was no way on earth that a product that is imported, that the price of it will remain the same when the exchange rate is 750 and when the exchange rate is 1,000. So obviously, there has been an intervention to ensure that the price of PMS will not go worse. That is one, on one side. On the foreign exchange side of things, it doesn't appear as if um, much success has been achieved yet. There were issues around Afrexim providing us about $3 billion. I don't think that Afrexim has been able to shop for that money yet and, and put it on the table. I don't think that has happened. Uh, recently, there's also a world by $1.5 billion. It is possible that that, could, that will happen because I mean, World Bank uh, can make that, can put that on the table. I also believe that the fact that oil production has been improving, uh, where as we're told, it will also help in a little way. It is not improving the way we expect. We would rather have seen a rev up of production much faster than what we are seeing. But the fact that it is also improving gradually shows that um, some, some addition to the supply side of foreign exchange may begin to happen. But if you ask me, uh, the supply side is not happening fast enough. Uh, maybe further intervention might be required, including probably asking IMF for some money. It is, it is a possibility. Where we are right now, I don't think that any possibility should be taken off the table. I understand perfectly the issues around our debt profile, but at the same time, we need to solve the issue of the stability of the Naira or the increasing depreciation of the Naira against major policies. If we cannot fix the supply early enough, one of the options to fix that supply is to actually get more money from where we can get the more money. An IMF comes across to me as a possibility. The other part which I have mentioned is to just look at the breakdown of that inflation figure. We have a, a headline inflation that is 26.72. Uh, but food inflation is 30.64. What that says to me is that if I can bring down the food inflation, I will bring down the general inflation level in the economy. It is no brainer. So I can focus effort. I mean, government can focus effort on what it can do to bring down the food inflation, and it will help it to moderate the general inflation trend that we see in the economy. I wonder how that will be done, because the food inflation is also tied to a lot of other things, effects that you have mentioned, and so many other policies that will make the people who are supposed to produce this food to find it really, really difficult. I'm just wondering, why is it... Why does it always have to be a secret? If the government is having an intervention in fuel, for instance, why are they hiding it? And, you know, we found, I was just telling my other guests that, we found out that on the budget of 2023, from January to June, the money spent on fuel subsidy is almost the same amount, above in excess of uh, uh, $3 billion, uh, the, almost the same amount that will be spent on palliatives, the so-called palliatives that are not even getting to, to a quarter of the population in the space of three months. So the government spends XYZ amount of money for fuel subsidy from January to June, which is six months, and spends almost the same amount of money on palliatives for three months. And will you call that a, a good policy? Has fuel subsidy removal even helped us in any way? 
Well, what you have referred to, um, you know, let's just use arbitrary now. Uh, you're saying uh, we, let's say we save 3 billion naira. I'm just using arbitrary numbers now from subsidy. And uh, we allocated that same amount now to palliate it. And nothing has changed. Actually, something has changed. It is what has changed is the reallocation. Now, under fuel subsidy, um, I have a fuel gas now. I write a fuel gas. And I also have a, 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 a neighbor who uses a motorcycle. I get probably four times its subsidy under the fuel subsidy. The amount, the benefit to me is probably about four times what he gets when he uses an Okada under a fuel subsidy regime. Under a palliative regime, I'm not even going to show up at the window where they are sharing palliative. Mm. But he probably will show up there and get palliative. So there has been a reallocation from something that benefits the rich more to, uh, and shift it to something to benefit the lower rung of the ladder the more. So there is a, there's a, um, a reallocation that has happened. So it is not exactly right to say it is the same thing by virtue of the reallocation that I have just described now. However, there is a room for a whole lot more to be done. And that is what everybody um, is still waiting for. You spoke about food inflation. Uh, food inflation, when you go drill down into the report, you see that part of the food inflation was talking about potato. Potatoes are, are not imported. Some, I think some of the Irish potatoes are still imported. It was talking about yam and other tubers. It was talking about fruit, meat, vegetables, milk, egg. So most of these things, uh, it's not all of these things that are imported. You and I know that. Uh, Local well, uh, let me come in there. I'm, okay. a, I'm a village man. <laughs> so I know how this food comes to be. Uh, there used to be a time where if you're planting your yam farm or cassava farm or whatever farm, it's the knife and the hoe that you use. Nowadays, nobody uses knife to clear their farm. They use herbicides to clear the farm. At least the initial clearing, you'll use herbicides. And you clear a large expanse of uh, farm. Now, a, a container, a one-liter container of herbicide, I always use this uh, example, a one-liter container of herbicides two years ago, used to be 1,000 Naira. Some places you get it for 900 Naira. Now it is 5,000 Naira. So whether or not Irish potato is imported from another country, the fact remains that for you to be able to plant it, you need things that will come from outside our country. You need fertilizer, which we do not produce, we, we have to import. So if the FX goes up and everything that is being imported into the country goes up, these farmers will still suffer, except you want them to go back to knife and hoe, which will make the production smaller. So if you were harvesting like 100 bags of Irish potato or whichever potato you were harvesting, you will be harvesting like 20, which will still lead to a, a shortage of this food and the inflation will rise. So it is tied. Whether it's produced here or not, it depends on things that come from outside. So when you say, exactly. yes, so that is what it is. The analysis is easier. The analysis is saying we have identified that food inflation alone is 30.6%. Yes. That if you are able to intervene in food inflation, you moderate general inflation. Correct. So you have spelled out areas of possible intervention mm. to make the food inflation get moderated. Beautiful. So you've broken it down that the guy needs uh, herbicide. So that's an intervention area for government. Mm. You mentioned that he needed but he needs fertilizer. That's an intervention area for government. Mm -hmm. He will transport food from where it is produced to the market. So maybe his transportation costs. As, as, as reason, that's an area of intervention, but for the government, mm -hmm. there is even an area of intervention that has to do with simply releasing certain product from national reserve. If I take a maize, for example, maize is a very important component that goes into animal feed. Yeah. So whether you're talking of production of uh, uh, poultry or, or pigry or all those other, other things, yeah. animal food generally. Now, Maize is a product that the federal government stores in National Reserve. Hopefully, they have them. 
So if prices <laughs> go up too much, an intervention to moderate price in such situation is release some product from your natural reserve and help to deflate that pressure. So the opportunity for intervention in that food space is there. It is for us to work it out and make it happen. Bring down that 30.64, drag it down all the way to, 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 to 25, and, and you will have solved a, a whole lot of problems and reduce the pressure that is on the composite inflation field. Mm. Okay, well, um, you've been talking from a point of optimism today, and I, I, I like it so much. Uh, you are the expert. So let's just have a final word. Um, if there are things to have, you have left unsaid that the government can do uh, that will give us light, because a lot of people are not seeing that light at the end of the tunnel, just give us those things in summary now as we wrap up Bolaun. Okay, uh, for me, the low hanging fruit is to look at where the biggest pressure is coming from, and it is food. food yeah. And the government must ask itself, what can it do in that space? Because that is where the biggest pressure is coming from. Uh, number two is the direct intervention of government, even in that space, by farm, by getting involved in this 500,000 hectares of cultivation that he spoke about in July. I remember the president saying that. Here is the reality about food products. If, as at May 29, when the president uh, was sworn in, that speech of July, that we have started to implement it, if corn has entered the ground, if rice has entered the ground by the end of May, by now we will begin to see the, the output of some of those products. Therefore, government must move faster on some of this initiative. I want to plant, I want to plant. Stop, take it away from I want to, and get into the farm and do the planting. I want to improve infrastructure that links uh, centers of production to the market, get into the space and begin to improve on those, on those infrastructure, whether it is storage or the road or, or whatever. The earlier we move into all these things, the better for us as a country. Mm. Thank you so much, Bolahon, for your time this morning and trying to help us make sense of what we were discussing here. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, that was Bola on Olojede, a public policy analyst, uh, talking to us from Lagos here. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking into our second hot topic. Stay with us.